Welcome to Breathe California TV. Each week we present um, a show to help you um, live and breathe healthier. It's much more focused on prevention than it is on treatment, which I consider to be the flaw in the medical system. It's far too um, concerned with treating people and not enough with preventing things. So, um, we're going to have a public service announcement, and then we'll have some exciting events for you to come join talking with Breathe California's Deputy Executive Director. See you in about 30 seconds. What it feels like to have an asthma attack is, well, you can't breathe and you can't tell anybody that you're having an asthma attack because you, you can hardly talk. You can maybe say one or two words, but you can't say much else. Breathe California has helped me come in contact with more asthmatics and more people who have the same case as I do. It's important to me because I don't feel like I'm alone in the fight against asthma. Welcome back, I'm Terry Trumbull. I'm a volunteer for Breathe California. Our guest is Tanya Pavipilli who's the Deputy Executive Director of Breathe California. Um, so what in the heck is Breathe California, Tanya? So uh, Breathe California is a 111-year-old local nonprofit that fights lung disease in all forms and also works with its communities to promote lung health in all forms. We run, a, the organization runs a variety of local programs to advocate for key clean air and public health policies, provide information on COVID and other serious lung diseases like COPD, uh, prevent teens from using tobacco and vaping, teach kids how to manage their asthma, distribute CPAP machines, and also other breathing equipment as needed. Um, prepare the community for local health, lung health emergencies like wildfires, assist smokers uh, who want to quit uh, smoking, and also we support innovative research. Um, overall, it has been a really busy uh, last few months as we have been advocating for more anti-flavored tobacco ordinances in the area, we work with so many jurisdictions, all eight Bay Area counties, um, and we've been doing uh, wildfire education in the community. We recently had our children's summer asthma camp, and here we are continuing to fight COVID. Are you familiar with uh, Proposition 31? Uh, there's an article in today's Mercury on it, and I gather the tobacco industry is trying to block all of our ordinances to um, uh, control use of uh, e-cigarettes and flavored tobacco. Um, yes, that's like an ongoing issue. Uh, the industry always has ways and tactics and obviously there's a lot of money that you can spend on um, you know, campaigns like that. And in November, 2022, there'll be the elections and the ballot where uh, they come again to um, you know, stop California from passing the bill. So we're still waiting on that. And uh, we continue to educate and advocate. Um, so the community knows that this is the right thing to do. So um, it's called Breathe California. How much of California does uh, your particular organization cover? We cover all eight counties around the Bay and we um, serve 40,000 local um, residents every year. Uh, Pre-pandemic and now we continue to be back at that number. Um, we also serve a lot of lung disease patients and their loved ones. Um, vulnerable populations like um, senior citizens and children, people who are at risk for lung disease and uh, those with health inequities. For example, those who smoke, who need assistance and those who are exposed to the secondhand smoke, um, those have, that have environmental and energy justice communities. We, those are the ones that's most affected by air pollution. 
we also work with our community partners all around in all the counties that we serve, um, delivering services at schools, coalitions, other nonprofits, hospitals, clinics, and community centers. Um, the other thing we do is to work with decision makers in um, all the cities in these counties and key opinion leaders. So we educate the elected representatives, government officials, and community leaders about these um, stressing issues to promote clean air and also advocate for health policies. Um, in general, we work with the general public and uh, including the underserved populations, children and their caregivers, youth and teens. So um, my business card for Breathe California says Monterey Bay. Um, so I gather that's also um, Santa Cruz, Monterey Bay, um, San Benito County, anything else we're missing that are um, you're, you're right, Terry. Um, so San Benito, all of San Benito County and um, so the Central Coast, Monterey Bay area, Salinas, um, uh, King City, Seaside, these cities are also those that we cover. We also do um, Far East, like Contra Costa County um, and in the, on the West, like San Francisco. Um, and we're able to serve all the counties around the Bay. So um, three months ago, the show started being seen uh, throughout Santa Cruz County by their public access. So um, next week, we're going to have um, Fred Keeley, the former county supervisor and assemblyman, on the show. And uh, almost everything that you're saying applies to the Monterey Bay area as well. Yes, that's right. So, you and I hear and use it all the time. Could you explain what secondhand smoke is? Yes. Um, so when someone smokes a cigarette or vapes uh, an e-cigarette or uses one of those disposable um, vape, vaping devices, um, I wish I could show you. I have it in my cabinet here, like people who have um, tried to quit smoking and they just give it away. So we keep it so we can educate people. Uh, but it's not with me right now. So when you do uh, one of these actions of smoking or vaping, the smoke that passes from your mouth and from the cigarette butt or the vaping device, it just um, you know passes in the air to the person who's sitting next to you and they inhale it. And that's called secondhand smoke or vape. So, in um, case of vape, it's the aerosol. So secondhand aerosol. So uh, why is Breathe California concerned about it? So yes, it's smoke from one individual that's gone into their lungs. Is there some way that that can create a health risk? Yes, it is as you know bad as you are smoking a cigarette or vaping the device. Um, so that affects your life as much as it affects the smoker's life. So. Uh, you're inhaling all the same chemicals um, and all the aerosol into your body. So you are at as much risk as this person who is uh, smoking or vaping. So uh, it can cause lung diseases. It can exacerbate asthma if you are already having COPD um, or um, any other lung disease. If you have a child or those that are immunocompromised, um, you are at risk of having symptoms like breathlessness or um, um, anything that a smoker experiences. There's a chance that those will, you know, be exacerbated on your health. So uh, you've worked on ordinances to prohibit smoking around playgrounds and parks and uh, in apartment buildings. Now, why would you worry about an apartment building for secondhand smoke? That's a very good question. Um, apart from what I explained about secondhand smoke, um, so that definitely is a problem in multi-unit housing. That's what we call them. Um, in apartment complexes, houses or units are so close by, the smoke can pass through a vent or even through the walls into the next unit. If the person or the family next door has a child, a newborn or a senior who's trying to just live their life normally, it's gonna affect them and their day-to-day -day life. 
And a lot of people felt um, they had issues, especially during the pandemic, because they had to just leave their home instead of being in their home. They had to go out or open their windows and doors. And even if you open their windows and doors, the smoke is still going to pass into that unit. So that affected their life. Um, and we had complaints from parents who was trying to help their kid who was having asthma and we would help them or educate them that they need to go to their doctor maybe and some of the property owners require that you show a prescription or like um, you know doctor's note saying that you have this problem so we 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 fight hard for um, such kind of ordinances or a better ordinance to be passed in the cities that protect people uh, from secondhand smoke so that's one part of the issue. The other is that there's something called third-hand smoke that actually travels and stays in the walls for many, many years. And, um, you know, that's third-hand smoke. It still exists. Those chemicals are in the walls or on the doors or it, it actually is on your clothes. Um, and if you're carrying a child or giving care to another person, um, they inhale these chemicals through their clothes and through the walls. So that's that's not good either for you. So we're talking with Tanya Pili from uh, Breathe California. Uh, she has a couple of exciting Breathe California events. She's going to talk to us about after this 30 second announcement. Stay with us. It's, it's given me a chance to grow and be with people who has the same problem and uh, it's, it helps you to, uh, to manage your life better too because you hear different things from each person and uh, it's just been really helpful in many ways. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Terry Trumbull with Tanya Paya Pilly of um, the professional Breathe California staff. So um, state of California has announced that it's banning the sale of fossil fueled vehicles in 1935. Um, so that really is designed to encourage electric vehicles, which um, people may not realize our unhealthy air is 85% from um, emissions from cars. So it's the same problem that causes uh, climate change. Um, so what are you trying to do to promote electric cars? Very well. So we have uh, an event that we are coming up with. It's on the September of 24th. It's a Saturday. And um, just like the event's name is Ride and Drive. And just like it says, it's it's like you can come by and drive an electric vehicle to try it out, or you can ride along with the dealer or an owner of the vehicle. Um, and, you know, we're part of the Silicon Valley uh, Clean Cities Coalition. We are the coordinator and we sponsor lots of workshops and events to increase the number of advanced vehicles and reduce petroleum use. Um, uh, Clean Cities is actually a program that's funded by the United States Department of Energy to reduce petroleum use as a sustainability and national security focus. Uh, and this event is actually um, trying to promote clean air. So this year we also plan to have electric school bus, but it's only for the ride. It's not to drive, so you cannot drive it. Um, and as a part of this event, you can come to the event, bring your family just for fun. There's food, there's games, music, and there's a raffle. Um, or you can just sit by the lake or uh, it's by uh, the Lake Cunningham Park in San Jose. Um, and it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on September 24th again. And everything is free. So you can sit near, you know, it's by the water park on White Road near the intersection with Tali Road in San Jose. So um, that is absolutely critical. Yesterday I was in a meeting talking about how our electrical grid needs to be expanded because of 
um, Californians own more than one car per person. So uh, we have uh, more than 40 million registered here. And uh, I don't know how many are currently electric, but if you were to say 10%, you still need to jack up the grid to be able to provide electricity for 36 million more people. Um, so we've got a long ways to go, but it's absolutely vital uh, both for um, uh, sea level rise and for our health. There, uh, outside of um, me on Highway 101 is a um, big neon sign that says, it's not too late to do something about climate change, but later is too late. Um, basic idea meaning let's get jumping now and get something done. So um, I think it's just great. Um, my advice to you is three years ago, I was looking for a new car and I tried out a bunch of electric cars and it's real easy to get confused. You know, I had one salesman trying to tell me that the accelerator and the brake were the same pedal. And um, it's, uh, if you take your foot off the accelerator, your car does gradually slow down, but that's not like a brake. So um, there's a lot new to learn about electric vehicles. So show up for the electric vehicle uh, drive and ride. And then um, I understand that you've got in some world famous celebrity to uh, host your annual um, fundraising walk this year. Yes. <laughs> so we have our annual fundraising walk that's coming up too. Um, it's on October 8th, 2022. And our committed sponsors are um, Santa Clara Family Health Plan, Monterey Bay Air Resource Board, C-Band Benefits Group, Santa Clara County Dental Society, and there are others. And we have a great MC, like you said, we have um, Terry Trumbull. <laughs> so um, we're really Am excited. I too modest? <laughs> you know, you're really excited. This is our um, 20th annual walk, one health walk that we are gonna celebrate this year. Um, so it's gonna be great. And we have a volunteer team from uh, Santa Clara County Federal Credit Union who's gonna come. And this takes place at the velodrome area of Hellier Park in South San Jose. It's just off of Highway 101. Um, the registration starts at 9.30 a.m. Walk begins at 10 a.m. We'll have a little warm up session just before the walk. Um, and we're trying to have Zumba to do the, the warm up. And um, to give you a little bit more detail, it's a 5K walk. It's about 3.16 miles. Uh, but there are shorter routes that are available in case someone prefers to do that. Um, there would be a clean uh, vehicle display again over there. There are health fair booths, continental breakfast, raffle and prizes. It should be a fun family event. Like for those of you who want to just come by and a good morning stroll because it, the area is shaded, it's flat. Um, so come with your family or your team and um, help raise funds for Breathe California and all our programs that we do. Yeah, and uh, I don't think there's any way we can overemphasize how important exercise is for your health. Uh, I'm a lawyer and when I took the bar exam, my uh, brother, a doctor says, you got to remember you don't study all the time. Uh, your brain is a physical part, just like uh, the rest of your body. And it works better if you're out exercising every day. Um, so I passed, so I must have done something wrong. Um, so uh, Tanya and everybody's been able to see how sweet and likable you are. You want to tell us a little bit about your uh, background? Sure. Um, so I um, 
Well, it's okay. So to start off with, I actually have a background as a physician. I finished my um, medical degree in school in India. This was 10 years ago or maybe more than 10 years ago now, um, a little over 10. And um, I wanted to always, um, you know, promote health. And that's the main reason why I wanted the medical background and um, uh, prevention was uh, really close to my heart and um, from the country that I'm coming from. We really needed a lot of prevention. And I, once I came to the US, um, I wanted to like focus more on prevention and saw there was public health opportunities that I could focus. And um, that's how I eventually started doing. I uh, finished my course in Master of Public Health and then I wanted to volunteer. Um, lung health was very close to my heart for a very long time and I looked at places to volunteer. Um, and I started off at Reed, California as a volunteer and an intern. Um, it was hard to get in. <laughs> and um, uh, I think the, the organization was going through a transition at the time. And then um, uh, I joined here as a volunteer and then as an intern. And then after that, when I uh, started working in senior health and wellness program, um, I really enjoyed it because I was teaching senior citizens or just talking to them in general. And that is something that I have done and um, enjoyed to do. So I continued to do that until um, I was offered a position to um, work in tobacco control or the tobacco prevention program here at Breathe um, with the California Tobacco Control Program grant. Um, so Margot Seidner, who is the CEO, she offered me this position and um, it was a brain switch for me to switch from medical to like tobacco control exclusively. Um, so it took me um, some time to like understand, but here I am now, it's going to be, it's almost four years and I really enjoy what I do. Um, and then soon after that, or maybe like, so now I am in the deputy executive director role. And it's been a year since I'm in this role. So I work with all the teams, not just tobacco or senior health. I work with all the team members to um, you know, promote clean air here in the Bay Area. Um, and it's been fun and very fulfilling. Well, uh, congratulations, starting as an intern to move up to the number two person in the organization. Margo has been the executive director for, I don't know, 42 years, something like that. So it's uh, pretty impressive. Um, so um, what else uh, are you doing that uh, we ought to know about? Um, so I do want to stress on you know, the main purpose of our breath of life walk and the, it, the purpose is twofold. Um, is one, to raise money for Breathe California's mission of clean air and healthy lungs. Um, and we have a $15 registration fee and more importantly, we also collect pledges for the walk. So this time the fee is actually lower uh, to make up for a park parking fee of like $6. But as, our, as a clean air and healthy lens leader, we also encourage people to do carpooling as much as you can to come for the walk. And the second part is to just come out to the event and show support for the same mission for those of you in, um, who have similar thought like us. Um, please unite with us and you know show people that this is important. We care for the air. Uh, breathing sh certainly should not be hard. So um, uh, I do encourage everyone to like go to our website. It's uh, breathoflife.org. It's very easy. Um, just check us out. And if you do the online registration, it's easier. And there is a guaranteed t-shirt or a mask that you will get. You can also download tips to help with um, fundraising. Um, so you'll be contacted by a representative from Breathe California. Uh, to set up a fundraising page. So you can send it to that link to your friends and family and invite them to donate to us. 
Um, you can also call our office or um, register with a credit card by calling the office. Um, our phone number will be listed down, 408-998-5865. And certainly you don't have to come to the work in order to donate. You can do that through the website that I just mentioned. So um, I've been involved with um, Breathe California since uh, 1973. And uh, the number you just gave, uh, I'm sure you would love to have volunteers to come down. So um, if you can come down and help with any of the wide variety of things, it's 408-998-5865. I've done uh, five or six health fairs, which have really been a joy. Um, you basically, um, sit at a table and people come up and ask questions, but you have uh, 13 different lung uh, issues, problems that uh, Breathe California has uh, pamphlets on, or you can direct them to somebody on staff like yourself that knows how to give up the answer. And there are uh, pamphlets that I've seen on, what, 10 languages that Breathe California? Yes, we have um, pamphlets and brochures uh, on all the issues that we um, advocate for. Um, please come and uh, take a look at all those, uh, you know, the tables that we would be putting up for the walk and for the ride and drive for that matter. Um, so, so, you know, and if you have any questions, you can directly ask one of the staff members. We're all going to be there. And certainly if you need any help, um, you know, you can also look up on our website um, that's listed. Tanya, we've got about a minute left. Um, what do you want people to remember from your appearance on this show? I do want everyone to remember that, um, you know, as the local lung health leader in the community, we are a grassroots community. Um, check us out. And if you have or you need any help with any lung health or air quality problem, or you want to volunteer or donate, check us on our website, lungsaras.org, or please call us at 408-998-5865. And do come and check us out on at our walk on October 8th. Thank you very much for joining us. And we really appreciate the work that you do. Um, Thanks, Gary. So check in with us uh, next week for another uh, show. Um, we'll get try to get something half as exciting as this one was. See you then. Bye. Thanks. Bye.